Sports Joe presents House of Rugby. Together with Heineken. Get the facts. Be drink aware. Visit drinkaware.ie. Hello and you're all very welcome to this week's House of Rugby. My name is Maud Thrasen Rule and I'm delighted to be joined this week by former Ireland international Senin Iopu and rugby legend Brent Pope to look back on this weekend's semi-finals and look ahead to next week's Rugby World Cup final featuring two teams that have won the title three times. I mean, we'd be happy with one title, but we won't dwell on that too much. But lads, how are we doing? Yeah, it's been odd for both of us because, you know, we're born in New Zealand and yet we've been part of the Irish journey. So I was very emotional at that match. I paid over the odds like everybody else to go to that yeah. match. Trains, planes and automobiles from Brussels. But what a match, you know. At the yeah. end of everybody, all the Irish supporters that were around me, head in the hands, oh my God, you know, we've made it an extra beat hurts, in the last. Brent. It still hurts. And very emotional when you saw the after scenes with Johnny and that because we've followed his career since the start. He's a St. Mary's guy and also Keith Earls and Peter Mutt. These guys that won't be a part, even Bundy won't be a part of, mm-hmm. of the next World Cup campaign. Very sad for them. But on the end of the at the end of the day, taking it from a, a, a just a rugby perspective, the better team on the day won. Mm-hmm. Not that that makes it the pill easier to swallow. It doesn't because the French could say the same about South Africa when they lost. But um, I think at the end of the day, and we'll talk about it a bit later, I think that too many things went wrong on that particular day and the margins were so tight, you have only need one thing to go wrong and, and it's the difference and that's all it was. What will linger the most for them after that World Cup defeat, do you think, Sonny? Well, oh, you probably have to ask the players uh, directly <laughs> in terms of how they're feeling, but you know, I was, I was actually the same as Brent, so, you know, I felt... Pretty emotional, but also extremely proud. Did you have the half and half jerseys then? I actually, um, <laughs> I, I actually, and I, and I quite publicly said on All Blacks TV when I was doing some um, work with them, I was going for Ireland. Um, but in the back of my head, you know, if 90 to 100% of execution around, you know, the, the five kind of key mm-hmm. KPIs of the game. But um, yeah, I was wearing green for that game, but at the same time, I 100% respected the mana legacy of the All Blacks since 1987 in that mm-hmm. first final against France in Auckland, right up until 2023 here in France, and certainly felt so much pride for Ireland as well, and being um, a huge supporter and, mm-hmm. um, you know, have that emotional connection like Brent to, to Ireland. So, you know, to go into this World Cup for Ireland two years at number one for the first yeah. time as contenders in this World Cup was historic in mm-hmm. itself. So um, it's that balance of... Uh, respecting the legacy of a team like New Zealand and then a, a brand new historic legacy now yeah. of Ireland. Let's go. But that's what will linger with them. You know, it's a case of, you know, all these sports psychologists, and I heard it plenty of times, uh, if not when, you know, and I mean, mm. this was, the, uh, I firmly what, what, believe was this it was our Ireland's best time. opportunity? Yes, and I think so. Well, certainly you can't, we can't talk and everything in retrospect, of course, you know, we're the greatest experts now that the game is, uh, the game is over and it could have gone the other way even in the last minute. But, I mean, I think if you look back over all the World Cups, you've had a number of outstanding individual players, uh, O'Driscoll's, O'Connell's, Keith Wood going back. But I don't think we've been in a situation, when I say we, Irish situation, when you've had so many players that really believed that this was the year, as did I. And, you know, I, I was the same. I was on New Zealand media uh, talking about that. I thought that it was that Ireland... Um, not only deserved to win that match, but were going to win it. So I was a bit surprised when actually the All Blacks, the All Blacks, you know, I did warn, I did warn people out there that, you know, you never want to play an All Black team that's backed up against the wall, which yeah, they were. Yeah, and it's rare that the All Blacks go into a knockout game like well, this as underdogs. The, the country was divided about who should be their coach, who should be their captain mm-hmm. before this World Cup. Then they got that whipping by South Africa and Twickenham. And suddenly they disappeared under the radar. And I just said to the Irish at that stage, be warned. And yeah. they came back to me, oh, well, you know, New Zealand are gone. They're a tier two nation. All the, <laughs> oh I thought, God. oh, God, they're just going to use this. They're <laughs> yeah. going to use this. And I think Adi Savia said it right. He said, we keep receipts. Yes. And he said, we, 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 we put all our receipts across the table against Ireland because that had been building since the series mm. loss. Uh, so I, I think that is what lingered with them, but it's another four, it's another four years, as a few of the All Blacks told them, as the Australians told New Zealand years ago, you've got to wait another four years. Now, what players disappear out of the scene? You won't have any Johnny Sexton, you probably won't have a Robbie Henshaw or a Bundy Arkey. So it's a, about rebuilding now. The rebuild starts now. And are there any major changes that need to be made in the next four years or what would you like to see? Should they change anything? 
No, the, or the, was it so close? No, the key for Ireland. I'm not sure what you think, Brent, and yourself, but the key for Ireland is just keep developing mm. the players through the system. Yeah, like, we've agreed uh, underage system. One hundred percent. Like as long as you know, it's kept robust and forward thinking. And I know there's strategic projects and relations, you know, gone out globally just to keep ahead of the game. But I mean, like Brent actually mentioned, just in terms of the experience that a team like New Zealand have, have mm-hmm. been uh, compared to uh, Ireland. Uh, for example, when you mentioned the Australia to New Zealand, that was George Greig and George Brian Callagher yeah. at the end, and that's the famous four years. Four years. And then I could hear Rico yeah. say that to <laughs> someone on the field. I was like, uh, you don't have to do a George Greig because, uh, yeah. you yeah. know. He came up with that line. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, all of that history is actually really interesting and quite, um, mm. it adds to the emotion that we were feeling as well. But also the All Blacks have been there. They've been there in terms yeah. of what Ireland has and what we are experiencing, when I say we, I mean Ireland, yeah. what we're experiencing now, the All Blacks have been yeah. there since they 87, have. 91, 95, um, the well, 99 to 2011. Years. All the way. If you had told me in 1987, was, um, I was involved in that World Cup, Scott, if you had told me <laughs> it was going to be another 25 years <laughs> yeah. before New Zealand won another World Cup, I'd say, no, they'll win it next time. So they have been there, and they have known about rebuilding and coming back strong, and I think Ireland are in a, in a rude good place with the development. In fact, I think they're better off than a lot of the other nations. South Africa are going to have to have a complete clean-out after this mm-hmm. World Cup. Look at their age of the profile of their pack. New Zealand's about the same, losing a lot of players to Japan now. So I think New Ze- uh, Ireland, with their underage structure, their under-20s this year, their uh, um, pr- provincial rugby is still strong. Mm-hmm. So that'll unearth the next... Mm-hmm. Ogar and I was just talking to a guy over the shop there at, at this before and he said he said I think Crowley's going to be better than Sexton and Ogar and I said great if that's he is fantastic but that's yeah. the belief you want yeah. and you've got Prendergast there as well and that's how many right. other ones for one and, and, uh, and another young yeah. players coming through the, through the system so I think yeah. we're, in a good, we're in a good place will the fact that it was another quarter final exit hang on them will it affect them in any way well I saw I don't know whether you saw the 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 um, uh, interview with Terry Dusatois and mm. Richie McCaw, and they both said something that was quite revealing to me because all the all the way into this match, I'm talking about the New, uh, the New Zealand uh, Island match. It was all about no, this team has moved on. Mm-hmm. The, the psychological part of the game won't affect them, and both those captains said no. At some stage in a game, this doubt is going to creep into your mind unless you say two scores ahead or three, and you have that buffer. But when Ireland went into the second half behind in that match, of course, some of them some of them would have been thinking, oh, my God, are we going out we again? Go again. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting to hear it from McCaw and Dusatra because we're told by numerous coaches all the time, this is not going to affect us, the past mm-hmm. is the past and all that. But it just goes to show you that you can't stop those feelings of doubt yeah. coming in. And I think if you look at the last 10 minutes or 15 minutes when that game was in the pressure cooker situation, I'd never seen Caden and Doris make a mistake you know, in a game for for eighteen months or two years. You know, in, in my opinion, he's he's probably up there with Aldred as the best number eight in the world. When was the last time you saw Van der Fleer miss a tackle? You know, first phase. Mm-hmm. You know, these little mistakes crept in only because they started to tighten up, and yeah. they started to tighten up psychologically, and then they started to chase the game, which was the worst thing they could have been doing. When it got out to a four point spread, it gave New Zealand that little bit of cushion. Yeah. to play with. And they said, look, they defended their line heroically and bravely in the last few minutes, but there were just little turning points yeah. that were as much psychologically to do with that performance as it was physically. And, do you, and deeper than that as well, I mean, this time last year, 85% of New Zealanders wanted Fozzie out. Yeah. You know, they, they wanted yeah. him out and, um, you know, so you go six that losses in a row. <laughs> six losses in a row, go to yeah. South Africa in Ellis Park, beat them. Leadership group goes up yeah. to Robbo's room you know, mm. look, we've got to stand beside Fozzie. Yeah. Joe Schmidt and the team behind them. Well, that so, was the best move. So 100%. So there's all these um, factors, you know, both sides of a balanced, unbelievable game that, you know, from an Irish perspective, yes, we missed out on the quarter again, after the quarter again. But you know, in the context of it all, it was just a brilliant game of rugby. Yeah. I, I know it's well, not like what we wanted. Ian Foster is going to give a major two fingers if New Zealand <laughs> go ahead and win this World Cup. Well, he's he's led them now to a World Cup final and we'll, we'll talk about yep. that mm-hmm. now. It was an absolute whitewash last Friday. They beat Argentina 44-6 and the resounding feeling after that game was that it was the result of a bad draw. Would you agree the way the pools have fallen and the draw? Oh, 100%. Has gone? 100%. Yeah. We, I think everyone knows that. I think timing wise, yeah, not ideal. Um, but 
you know, you, you play with the cards you dealt and it was just going to be one of those games that I thought actually Argentina would have. Um, Were you expecting more from them? Um, I expected the All Blacks to put a, um, a solidifying performance in against Argentina uh, after a battered and bruised week against Ireland. Um, so I, I almost had expected a few points on Argentina, but with respect to the potential. It wasn't a good look for the competition, though, it Brent, and they, and they it, have it to look at this now. It was a terrible mistake. It was a terrible mistake. And I can see where they got to because they, they probably thought that things weren't going to change as much in four years. But they should have known better in the old song. But in a sense that they had to think that Japan and these teams that were so highly ranked after the last World Cup because they'd done so well – they must have thought that they could drop down the rankings instead of ranking them right up there. Ireland were, even though Ireland went into the World Cup ranked in 2019, ranked the number one side in the world, their ranking after the World Cup put them down into the situation they were always going to be on the other side of the draw. Yeah. But yes, it, it, it was a mistake. They won't be made again. But I also agree that, you know, you, you deal with the cards in front of it. And that could have been turned on its head. Had England beat South Africa, mm. you would have turned around and said, hold on. Admit it, you know, it, it, yes, it looked on the outset that, you know, South Africa would win that match by 20, 30 points. Yeah, yeah. But suddenly England should have won it. Mm. And that puts a whole new light on, you know, was that side of the draw? Absolutely, because of the performances. Argentina were disappointing, let's face the fact. Uh, Fiji were good in two of their matches. Uh, Australia were disappointing. But I suppose the, the organisers weren't to know that at yeah. that stage. Will know, they make a know. change now? Yes, they will. They're going to. I think they're going to draw it at the end of the following, the previous year, aren't they? Um, I need to confirm whether they're, they're going to do that. To, to be honest, all I could think about was the sooner we get a global competition to you know just ensure that the rankings are earned yeah. in the way that it should yeah. be from a pathway up, then it just makes it easier. Very mm -hmm. similar to what the women's are doing, yeah. the WXV. It means that there's a clear Rugby World Cup qualification route from a you know a tier one, two, three. Well, it's a joke when you have the, the top five event. ranked sides in the world on Ooh. one side of the draw. It, yeah. it, 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 it is a joke. It's happened before in football where you've had maybe – Brazil and with Germany or something like that, but not five teams, you know. Yeah. But you could argue against Scotland may have been highly ranked after last year's uh, uh, Six Nations, but generally South Africa, New Zealand, France and Ireland all on one side of the draw. Yeah. It was going to be lopsided and it was always going to be the, the quarterfinals were the semifinals. They, think, they really you know. were, but New Zealand, as you said, they could only play what was in front of them and they were immense <laughs> against Argentina. They scored seven unanswered uh, tries. Uh, will, uh, Should have will got another Jordan. one if Richard Mungo had passed the ball <laughs> yeah. to Jordan. Uh, will Jordan Hattrick, yeah, he could have gotten <laughs> four. But they were clinical, they were dominant, and they, they, they'll be quite pleased with the way things have gone for them now with the past two weeks. Yeah, because they're coming good. I mean, you've got to look at South Africa's trick. Not that the South Africans are probably the most resilient side. They just find a way to win. Mm -hmm. They should have lost to France. They should have on, on the basis of that game, that they stuck in, they stuck in, they hung in, and they won it. They should have been beaten by England, but they, again, they stuck in and yeah. won it the last few minutes. So their trek has been, a, and they lost to Ireland, of course, so their trek has been a lot more difficult. And New Zealand have come good from starting off that match against France, where they were good for the first half, second half, but they've steadily got better. So I think the freshness and the energy is with New Zealand. Yeah. I think the physicality and the history is with South Africa. So it's a tough one to call. Yeah. I, um, I absolutely, and I've said this before, I love and adore Sia Khaleesi in South Africa 100%. Oh, yeah. But I agree in terms of New Zealand unlocking, needing to peak for World Cups as opposed to the games very yes. much like Ireland before mm. the pinnacle events. Because you would have noticed when, uh, say, Graham Henry in 2011, the first time NZR got it right, kept on. The first coach to stay on after losing a World Cup. Yeah. Yeah. He was the first one and they won the World Cup after that. So in terms of the way that it's structured, they've just literally peaked for the final. And I actually, that's why I think that New Zealand are on a trajectory yeah. to punch again in this last week. Yeah. Yeah. They were able to take off their frontline players early on. They yep. finished the match with 14 yep. players. So they have that freshness about them ahead of next weekend. Yeah, that's an, uh, that's an argument that's sort of come in the rear vision mirror too. You know, all the people are saying to me, you know, what was, what was Andy Farrell doing playing the top team all the mm -hmm. way through? But I, I sort of I said, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because it's the same people sight. would have turned yeah. around if you hadn't played them and said, what are you doing yeah. resting these players that need match time? So the way that South Africans look at it is they only have to gear themselves up for one match now, mm -hmm. one match. 
and they've got to bring that passion. They didn't have the same passion as England. You could see it in their body language. They had it against France, but they didn't have it against New Zealand. Uh, they'll certainly have it against New Zealand. It's whether or not New Zealand, a bit like Ireland, it's whether or not New Zealand have the superior game plan. Yeah. Now, they didn't have it a month ago or so against Twickenham. They got strangled for the ball. And South Africa are the one team, apart from France maybe, the one team that can strangle you with possession. Mm. So it doesn't matter how many Will Jordans you have on the park, you know, how many uh, game breakers you have out wide. New Zealand rugby is about space, as is Irish rugby. If you give the New Zealand and the Irish team space, they will hurt you. If you take away that space, like New Zealand did against Ireland, and the South Africa did in Twickenham. If you take that space away from, they're a different team totally mm-hmm. because they used to play them with their more space in the in the Super Series where you see results like the Crusaders beating mm-hmm. Highlanders sixty five points to forty seven or something. Moanga and Jordan and these game breakers, Bowden Barrett's the Barrett's are used to playing with that space. South Africa will try to chop that off. I feel like I feel like uh, Joe and the team, the coaching team, are always like two steps ahead. So, for example, uh, I have, you would have known that against Ireland, yeah. the dinks in behind that defensive line because yeah. we're yes. so good. The space was so, there. like, twice, Barrett had done it in games yeah. before. So, Barrett, already all over it. But, like, say All Black South Africa, you know, they'll have anticipated yeah. different yeah. options yeah. of that. So, well, I'm let, really excited to see what they execute. Well, let's talk about the coaching ticket because, as you mentioned there, the knives are out for Foster. He had lost six out of eight games and and they wanted him out before the World Cup. And now he's after bringing him to a World Cup final. He could be the first uh, Rugby World Cup sacked. manager to be sacked well, after winning, I, um, it, like, winning the final. What has changed for them? I know they brought in Ryan and they brought in Joe Schmidt. How much has that had an impact on the team as well? Because I suppose the players stood by Ian Foster as well, which was huge. Oh, that was huge. I think that was the turning point just from the leadership group to go you know, up to yeah, Robert's room them. and um, support them and just sort of, you know, statement of intent to the public that us as players are going to stand behind our coach for this. But um, I remember very vividly at the start of the year, there was a uh, head coaches conference in London and a few of them came over to Dublin and I caught up with uh, Selara Mapusu from Samoa, mm. just chatting about different things. And then, you know, out in the media comes uh, Scott Scotty out for, uh, yeah. you know, the coach after the World Cup and you've got yeah. your coaches here, um, including Foz. And uh, so, you know, it's it's all those sort of that emotional roller coaster. Yeah. I cannot imagine being a head coach, yeah. but uh, a number of things, a number of, um, you know, I don't think people realise how much it actually uh, impacts a squad, let alone the person before the coach. Well, what's going through Scotty Robinson's yeah. mind now at the moment? He's probably the one person in New Zealand that says, oh, you know, how do I follow this if they if they win the World Cup? Yeah. Because he's probably thinking, you know, six months ago, the country desperately needed him. Every newspaper article was, you know, let's get Robertson there as soon as we can and let's mm-hmm. rebuild New Zealand rugby. Well, if he's got to start at a place there, you know, yeah. some would say there's only one place he can go and, 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 that, and that's down rather than up because, you know, it's a situation where he'll take over a team with a lot, a lot of changes that have to be made. Yeah. Moanga's off to Japan you know, uh, certain other players, Smith and that will retire. But I think, yes, I think it was a real statement of intent that they said, look, we believe in what our coach is trying to do. Mm -hmm. And even though the public didn't agree, even with Sam Kane, they didn't agree whether he should be starting. Well, that's what I said before. Both those are going to be given the two fingers up Mm -hmm. if they win a World Cup. I don't think it's good enough. I don't think it's good enough for them to just make the final, you know, because that's based on really on one game against Mm. Ireland. Because they were always going to beat Argentina, yeah. you'd have to say. And they were always going to, apart from that opening match against France, they were always going to get out of their group. So if we if we take the defining game in New Zealand's progress, it was that Irish match. That's what's got them to a final, I believe. Now, can they go one step further? We'll know on Saturday night. But, um, you know, yes, it's, it's, it's reinvested New Zealand's interest in this World Cup. You know? Absolutely. Well, Ian Foster was asked after that game on Saturday night if this was a revenge mission for him <laughs> now. I'm just proud to be part of this group. And there's nothing, it's not, it's not a personal agenda here. This is about the All Blacks. And it's always about the team. And um, things that happen to individuals in the team, and, and the, clearly they've happened to me, but it's doesn't change Team comes first. All the decisions we make have to be about what's the best thing for the team. And and right now we're we're doing a lot of those decisions together as a group, and it's working well. You, you know, know what springs to mind, and what I was going to mention is Brent was saying what you said. 
It's just I admire, like Ireland do the same. I admire the shared responsibility mm. in that piece and the cultural capacity and what it means. And very similar to South Africa, in their own way, they have their own shared responsibility, cultural capacity in terms of, say, 95 Mandela, New Zealand, we're never going to win that with that, yes. what that was going to yeah. do to the country. Mm. And so this here is a separate kind of new opportunity um, well, they all rallied around Foster and they showed mm. that faith in him and he's shown faith in the team as well. Um, the coaching ticket they have brought in, Joe Smith, you're good friends with him. What difference has he made? That he's he's big on the small details. Oh, he's an absolute genius. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like, I don't I, I, yeah, I admire him as a, you know, former colleague and, and friend and um yeah, he's just a genius, and, and you would have seen it in the breakdown work that they the were able, work was, they were able to execute yeah. to yeah. the millimeter of that new law change. You know, coming in from that mm. angle, you could see it all day. I'm surprised that mm. you know there weren't a couple of pings on that, but I mean, just living to the edge on certain um, areas of where no, he's teams known for would doing win the, the game. research on they say the the little big things. That's a good description of Joe. Like he'd, mm. he'd go away and, and and look at all Ireland's matches over the last few years and pick out this those little things mm -hmm. that make the difference and we saw that the difference they did make those little you know Ireland's back row was taken out of the game and that was I think solely due to Joe Smith saying look I know Josh's weaknesses I know Kaylin's weaknesses and their strengths mm -hmm. as well and you know let's play it a, a, a bit of a different way um, and and he achieved that and I think Jason Ryan has also had a, a you know he, he gets on with the players he's old school as far as coming from the Crusaders camp, he knew a lot of the players. They like him because he's a no no nonsense sort of sort of guy. On that interview, sometimes, just sometimes, I would like people to be a bit more honest. I kind of I grow tired of the, the word group being used all the time because okay. I, you know I, I'm not saying I, I you know it's, it's obviously a, a good answer, but he would have a right to say, hey. You know, yes, this is a little bit personal. <laughs> Maybe a lot he'd come out with it all after the, no, after but the because week. because you know, people would understand. Yeah, That's like, okay, you know, I, you know, he could turn around and say, I use this for motivation for myself. You know, I used yeah. to say, well, I'm going to show them. And that would be a really human part of mm -hmm. being a rugby coach or a player because you want to show. When people doubt you, the one thing you want to say is, I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them who's the best coach in this country and you shouldn't have doubted me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a real motiva motivational driving force, not only for him, and we use the word group, but for the whole group. And it's like Adi Sabia said, we keep receipts. Those receipts. We keep yeah. those receipts of Ireland coming out on our home patch and beating yeah. us out there and making history. We didn't forget that. And they used all that and the things that Peter Amani said or they didn't say, they used all that in a melting pot of motivation to come out for mm -hmm. that team and say, if we're not on our very best performance, we're not going to beat Ireland. But let's look at this. They haven't yeah. been past the quarterfinal. Let's play on that. You know, we're aggrieved that they come out to New Zealand on our own dung patch, they'd say, yeah. and, and beat us. They're keeping all those receipts, and then they just delivered on the day. They'll keep the receipt against... Um, Ireland didn't have any receipts for that match. Well, they'll have some now. They had the positive receipts <laughs> yeah. of, OK, we've beaten them, what, four times out of the last five or six games. That was their receipt. Yeah. Well, New Zealand will certainly look at the beating South Africa gave them in Twickenham yes. a few weeks before the World Cup when they're looking at next weekend. But if we touch on the second semi-final now, we wanted a contest and we certainly got that. And England, to be fair to them, they were written off before this game and they gave it their all. And they were the better team on Saturday night. And a 78th minute kick from Andre Pollard just broke their hearts. Oh, it was like almost like a classic yeah. South Africa, the last minute Pollock, oh. second time in a row. But you always what an felt absolute it was coming when you saw him coming 100%, in. 100%, but fair yeah. play to England. Oh my gosh, yeah. England deserved to win that. Yeah. South Africa didn't deserve to win it, yeah. but the heavens have given South Africa the win. So it's, yeah. uh, look, it's credit to England, though, I, I'm sure. And I know uh, a lot of friends from England and hmm. a lot of the Pretty people proud. at the games will be extremely proud of the performance England put in, especially, uh, you know, 55 minutes of that game. Um were pretty, you know, strong from scrum. Well, the game plan was perfect, wasn't it? Yeah, the they got their was, tactics they got right. The weather was perfect for them. Yeah. 100%. It, it was never going to be an entertaining match anyway. Yeah. But people were saying, oh, and I said, no, this game will be tight. Uh, South Africa would win. I think everybody predicted that. But I said, it's going to be tight because that is the master plan for, for Borthwick, the way that he coaches. 
an old kind of pack that rumble around, go from scrum to set piece, yeah. put the ball in the air where they had Stuart and these guys who were six foot five versus five eleven, and so it was working for them. Yeah, right. they controlled the tempo of the game. They won the aerial battle, and they put New Zealand, put South Africa under pressure in ways that they haven't been under pressure yeah, up until now. Just uh, why did they make that front row change? You know, that's what they'll be thinking because it was the scrum mm. that ended their mm-hmm. chances. Nothing else. In that game, when you look at yeah. the positions they were in the field, even the last couple of minutes. Yeah, um, well, they deserve a lot of credit. Sport can absolutely. be so cruel. They brought the physicality, they got the tactics right. But then again, South Africa find a way to win, as they always do. They know knockout rugby. They have faith in themselves. The coaches have faith in their bench and they're not afraid to make changes. Yeah, well, they're not. Even no, after 30 after minutes, we're right. ruthless. Well, it wasn't even 30 <laughs> minutes, probably 20 minutes. But 30 minutes. <laughs> I think it was 31 minutes. 31 minutes, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. no, just get um, them off. Hook them off. The old sheep talk, you know, pull them off. At the end of the day, you know, like, obviously, I know you don't like the word group, but team yeah. first, and oh, I'm no, sure no, that, no, I'm sure as many was coming off, you know, Pollock wins the game, it's all good. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I don't know about that. <laughs> no. Well, it was well, a boy's own stuff, wasn't it? You know, it could only be Pollard, you know. Y- that's it. You know, if it had been somebody else, they'd have missed that kick. You know, look yeah. against Ireland, then what, they missed four kicks or whatever like. But I don't think, I, I think LeBoc will start though, really. Oh, it'd be interesting to see. I think. Like, how will he have felt? After making that change, how would he feel? How will that have impacted him? Who, Pollard? No, um, Libok, after coming off. Well, that's a good. That's but a really good question. But he's a running. I think he yeah. also, you, as a player, you're a self aware of yeah. what you are his unbelievable is, at. So he's a running. Yeah. Bat, he's a running out half, and yeah. that game and that weather needed a exactly. kicking team. So it was yeah. one of those. It reminded me of like a video game, you know. And the coaches are like, "Oh yeah, take him off." Ninety five, yeah. Junior World Cup, you know. And yeah, then yeah. So it's kind of like literally that's how ruthless like to win hey, the game. Uh, but but at the end of the day, it worked. While it was ruthless, it worked. And people are even saying out in the street, should should maybe should maybe Andy Farrell have got Johnny off in the last ten minutes to give Crowley a shot because he was the type of player that might that might have been able to find mm-hmm. a way, and that we'll never know. But the same way that that we were just talking about that you know, when the rain started to come down and the couple of drop balls by Leboc, it wasn't his game. And as a player, you understand that. You say, look, you know, if the other team have six foot eight guys, why put a why put a six mm-hmm. foot three inch guy in in the lineouts? You find the biggest, tallest guy to compete. So I think it was a, it was a good idea. I, I'm not. It, It'll be an indication as to how South Africa are going to play this. Do they start with Lebok and they go to a running game where they use their backs or do they go with Pollard and it's going to be a kicking game? Mm-hmm. I reckon weather as well. Weather as but, well. Um, you need a hard and fast start against a team like All Blacks. Yeah. Because every game that the All Blacks have led in the first 10 yeah. minutes, they've won. Yeah. yeah. So South Africa Once would they have that, that buffer, yeah. it's really hard to yeah. and, um, get ahead. They've shown weaknesses in some of the lineouts in the mall. So then obviously the All Blacks have yep. opportunities to attack. So they would want the running game from inside the 22 or inside the half. And New Zealand were lucky enough to get back with a couple of key players for that Irish match and, and, and Lomax and De Groot because that was a real area of superiority for Ireland going into that game with Furlong and Porter. But suddenly New Zealand were able to match that. Mm. Uh, can they match South Africa's scrum for the whole 80 minutes? That's maybe another question that yeah. South Africa is looking at. Because South Africa will go after your Achilles heel. And where are they strong? They're strong physically. You know, it's a Beth and these man mountains the they bring on. won the game for them, yeah. like they did in 2019. And <laughs> the bomb squad. No, bomb squad. Ox yep. Nisha coming on. They, they make uh, they, Vincent Big Clark. They, up RG against Snyman. smaller men. Yeah. 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 Look you at know, the size the guys they can bring off. It's terrifying. Isn't it? Yeah. For an opposition. Look, oh, God, you bring... Yep. It's, What's Diamond? Six eight or whatever, and twenty stone or something. You bring them onto the park when the others are exhausted, you know. Yeah. But look, that's what they'll be playing to. New Zealand, obviously, right? We get it. It's important they get off to a good start, and then they they they're allowed that space. They can play the way they want to play. Looking at the scrum, there was a lot of talk after the game. Matt Williams was talking in studio um, after the game on Saturday night about uh, the approach to the scrum now that World Rugby have taken. He think, he feels like they're encouraged to scrummage to win penalties. Um, do you think the refereeing of the scrums should be looked at or how do you feel about it? We don't want it to turn into rugby league, but is there a lack of consistency there? 
because it becomes object, subjective, isn't it, from mm. the referee's call for yep. players getting smarter and cynical. Um, that's a great point, and Brent's probably a better place to <laughs> ask this, <laughs> answer this than me as a back. But, um, yeah, I have my preference, and it would always be that while that's a cynic, those mm. the potential cynical plays, the law changes were for the safety of the players so at the, mm. you know, in terms of the crouch those, engaged rather yes. than that old fashioned. So it's that balance of what's the right thing to do for the welfare of the of forwards the and the scrums in yeah. general, and then the values and integrity of the game. Oh, I'll yeah. give it to you there, Brent. No, I, I, <laughs> I, I agree entirely, and I think that that's what the rules were brought in uh, years ago. The, the 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 couple of things that have crept into the game, as far as I'm concerned, that I don't like, that I don't mm. like, and it's whether it's old school or not. The referee's decision now is being questioned by so many players. Every time a referee comes up with a decision on the field, you see all these players go into the air, hands up, mm. go into the crowd. You know, like it, it's it's a hard enough job anyway, refereeing mm. a game. But if we don't have referees in the game, there can be no game. And I think all this criticism about did the referee get it right, who was dropping on the... Like, going back to the dark arts, only the front rowers know the little intricacies of yeah. getting your shoulder down or getting the leg up or not pushing or pushing or whatever. How do they expect a referee to know that? He just gets he gets the sideline information a lot of the times from the, from the, the um, TMOs or whatever on that side of the scrum. So he's just got to make a decision. But... They're questioning. It's as if they know every aspect of the, of, of the law. And Richie McCall was famous for that. Richie McCall used to sit the the referees' exams, apparently, and he'd score more points than the referees himself. Mm. So consequently, in a game, when he'd go to them and, and, and say something, well, that's not quite right. You mm. know, Section 43B says mm. he can come in. I, but, I mean, as far as the scrum is concerned, yes, it should be, you know, for the running game, it should be a starting platform rather than a mm. end and end. We've already got teams saying... No scrum, no win, you know, and that's unfortunate, you know, that you can't produce, you know, things like Portugal and that produced a running game without having, you know, big guys in their culture to just pack down at a scrum. Yeah. So it should well, be a starting We don't want to lose point. it from... No, from yeah, it's part union, of the right? game and, yep. it's, and it's the wonderful part of a game because parents come up to me and say, look, rugby, the best thing about rugby is there's a position for every physique. Exactly, that's you know, it. Yeah. Whether you're tall and skinny, you're a second row. If you're a big stocky guy, you're a front row. You know, not being just to go and play in goal mm. and, so and football or something because you're not yeah. mixed the side profile. If you're fast, you're a winger. If you're small and cheeky, you're a scrum half. <laughs> yeah. <know>? Like, <laughs> You know, it's, it's it's stereotypical in that way, but in a good way. The refereeing, coming back to it, and this will be our last point on the refereeing, because we do recognise yeah. that it's such a difficult job, but are the refs refereeing the game differently in the first 10 minutes as opposed to the closing 10 minutes of a game? If the same infringement is happening, are we lacking that consistency, do you think? Perhaps, but I mean, in, in a sense... They're human too, so psychology is going to play a bit of a part of it. And you often hear commentators saying, "You know, back off." The other team has got the referee's ear. You know, by by, you know, questioning him at certain decisions or getting his back up or getting him on side. So, I don't know really effectively if that makes a difference. I don't know. I don't know how the last minute of a game that tight feels for a referee. I mean, he's petrified of making a mistake that'll yeah. cost a nation a game. You know, man, that's pressure. It's a bit yeah. like a, it's um, and obviously there's an art to refereeing. Yeah, there's a lot as as the game you know goes on and as teams play, trends compounding and trends, and you know there's an art to being the captain, and then the art to yeah. you know <laughs> having your narrative around. There's an know, art to the scrummaging. <laughs> it's like, of course, so yeah. There's technical. so many nuances and yeah. and interpretations, and um, yeah, it's uh, like uh, I know a lot of the refs personally, and uh, they. Mm. Yeah, they are human before they are referees, mm. but in that heat of the moment, obviously that's their job. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it actually reminds me of uh, Wayne Barnes. Yeah. When he was quite green, I am good friends with his wonderful wife Molly, um, and they're wonderful. And I remember, and was it the '95 World Cup, the final of uh, the All Blacks, and he was in, and he was quite new as a referee yeah, oh. for the final. Yeah. So um, oh, you know, that was a great learning period, and then we used that was used as a case study, and then now look, he's one of the best refs in the world. Um, it'd be interesting to see who's going to ref the final. Well, it'd be an interesting interview to, to, to talk to a referee at that level and say, what is going through your mind at that particular time? And I would suggest that it's you would like to think it's 80, at 80 to 90% of saying, okay, I just make the correct decision. I don't take the crowd into 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 
uh, context. Consideration, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't take I don't take the screaming the screaming players, the captains, or whatever. You just make that decision. But there's got to be a ten percent there that says, "Oh, have I made the right decision here? Yeah. I can't go back. Oh, d- did I make a mistake here? You've got French fans, allegiance screaming out. You know, I, it's a very difficult situation to be. You know, like to not take that into account. Mm-hmm. And it's a bit like I talked before. It's a very difficult situation for players not to take into account when that position. You know, how do goal kickers get over blank out? The, I mean, I know Ron O'Gara and Johnny Sexton and Wilkinson all talk about their tricks they have. Yeah. I think for Johnny Wilkinson, it was seeing a big clown's mouth or something and drowning yeah. out. The, but it's a hard thing to do. Well, it's <laughs> mental resilience, yeah. isn't it? Oh, exactly. And, and at the same time, I absolutely agree with Brent and yourself. At the same time, they're the lead, they're the lead yeah. facilitator of that game. You know, yeah, that's but, their yeah. job. But so it's that balance of... You're the man or you're the woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. About our team. We're talking about the World Cup. You make the wrong decision mm-hmm. in the last minute of a game that turns a nation about having an upset, uh, a victory or something, to nothing. I know. And I know. also the players need to paint the right pictures too. Uh, There's absolutely. shared responsibility yeah. in this. No, they need to paint the right pictures. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The South Africa, though, we have to give them full credit. The absolutely. resilience that they showed they know their strengths, they know how yep. to use that scrum and it won the game for them in yep. the end. Um, we'll just, before we look ahead to next week, we'll hear from Jack Ninabar who spoke about Manny Libok after the game and how he was feeling ahead of next week. That's the beauty of this group. We open and honest and because we have the right players, uh, the, the players accept it. Sometimes things aren't going your way, you know, we've done it with, uh, I can I can say numerous, uh, we, we've done it with Bongi in 2018, where we took him up after 30 minutes, he was just, uh, for that specific day, he was just not uh, uh, on fire, you know, but he started the next week again, uh, uh, the same with a guy like Billy, uh, we, we've took him off uh, early, because things didn't go his way, and, and the, the main thing is, everything is for the team, you know, and they understand that. And uh, and that's the beauty of the squad, you know. You open and honest, and 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 the players take it on the chin. And it doesn't mean that he won't start next week, you know. It, it's it, it's just unfortunately sometimes it's like that, you know. Uh, um, I thought, um, uh, uh, I, I mean, everybody, uh, we didn't miss a kick at goal tonight. Uh, every single opportunity we 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 got, we we utilised. Uh, and both him and Andre, you know, the, the, the kick that he also kicked in the beginning was a, was a tough one. Uh, but it's just, listen, that's, that's how it is. Uh, uh, it, it's for South Africa. It, uh, you, you, it's not for the individual. It's not for the ego. It's not for, it's for South Africa. They always draw on that, don't they? The bigger picture, who they're playing for. I know, I know you guys aren't really? fan of the word group. No, I, no just I it. absolutely love it. No, no, I, I'm hmm. like... It, it is what it is. High stakes are high performance sport. Yeah. It is what that is. You're literally the best of that moment in that moment for your country. Mm-hmm. So I, I actually, you know, agree as long as the I players just, had I their ju- policy it's on just, it. It's just coaches speak. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a word. It's nothing to do with the connotation. But they, the, right. the South African players, it's I like, feel why, they why? always speak about the fans. They always speak about their yeah. country, the bigger picture, that they're not playing for themselves, that they feel the no. sense of responsibility. That's part of good motivation. Yeah. And, and when it you works have cap- for them. When you're having a captain, do you have a captain, you know, not since Mandela on a sporting scene, when you have a, 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 a captain that encapsulates everything good about South mm-hmm. Africa and, and, and the, the uh, multiracial team and that, when he leads from the front and he's such a... A well-spoken man, and he's such a humble man that he. You just want brings honesty? You, you'll get it off Sia Khaleesi. Absolutely, and and that's why he's brought all this group together. Because some of those South Africans must be pretty hard to deal with, you know, those sort of big rugged men or something. But he's brought all that. He's brought all the country behind him, and that's that's a really powerful motivational mm-hmm. tool. Because if you isolate them. You know, if you get the country against you, you, so you keep going back to that speak and saying, we're doing this for everybody. We're doing it for the... Andy Farrell's like that. Brings yeah. the families involved, knows that any time off, knows they mean to be refreshed, mm-hmm. knows the whole group needs to be happy. And that's what that was the most important yeah. thing about that, that LeBoc did it for the team. 
or did yeah. it for the group. And, and he had hadn't much of a say, did he? <laughs> no, it, it, it's what he'd be thinking. Yeah, yeah. There's a difference. It's great you touched on that point around uh, the family environment with the national team because that mm. certainly was a huge factor to their of. performance. Well, 100% said that yeah. as well, that, oh, yeah. that, yeah. that their huge. families are always Absolutely. around Incredibly them and Nina important. Byrne knows the names of his kids and always yeah. asks about the person as opposed to the player and how the person is feeling. Because it's a holistic it's, view yes. of what makes a good player, and New Zealand had to do that years ago, and especially around the Polynesian or the Maori players, they had to really encompass that whole cultural difference between uh, a Fijian player playing for New Zealand or a Samoan player because the feelings on religion and culture and all those things, yeah. they had to encompass that on what makes a great player oh. and what makes a great player is a great person. Yeah, We don't know any different, but no. togetherness, that's the hell yeah, we are. But um, what was it, uh, Sia Kalesi in our MCC, we had a World Rugby Medical Commission Conference a couple of years ago and just as an example of how incredible he was, I remember Rachel Burfin and I were just preparing for our presentation on mental health of players and he kind of spotted us out, out uh, South Africa, we're staying at the same hotel and they had their training at, was at Lensbury at the time good couple of years ago and uh, he swatted us on the window and just came in and just wished us well you know just yeah. from a yeah. woman's uh, perspective and South Africa put out mm -hmm. a, a good luck message to the the woman box ahead of their game oh. for the WXV they're just a wonderful um, example of what makes rugby special as well and just he's a overall great role. He's a great yeah role yeah, role yeah, role yeah. In any yeah. sport uh, you yeah, know, yeah I mean he's probably one of the, the, the he's probably the most popular sports person in South Africa at the moment how will they feel after that performance when we compare it to how New Zealand will be feeling? Lucky, grateful, all these words will be used, that we're lucky to be here, guys. And But when I go, I turn it around and they will use that. No better team mm. to use, mm. I suppose, the disappointing form. I'm not saying disappointing. I mean, playing against France, they, they put in a Herculean performance. Mm. But they'll just be gearing up for this one match. They'll say, we've got here. Doesn't matter how we've got here. Doesn't matter whether we should have lost that game against England. We didn't. We won it. Now, how do we prepare for the, the All Blacks? The All Blacks will be saying the same. Forget about those performances before. Yeah. They don't really matter come game day. So they'll be also looking at things like, are we a bit fresher than the South Africans, given the extra day and given their, 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 the difference in the games? Because I think South Africa probably thought they were going to have an easier match physically against England. So New Zealand will be looking at that and they'll say, look, we need to start well. We need to try to run the South Africans off their feet in the first 15, mm -hmm. 20 minutes. Will they, will they look at the same approach that they had against Ireland or will they look at something that England did and look try to deploy some of their kicking they'll game strategies? If it's, wet, if it's a wet day, then they'll go to the air, you would, you would suspect. If it's a dry park, I think they'll go to the way that maybe Ireland took on South Africa, try to move them to the wide, wide. That's another mm. catchphrase that's come out of us. What is wide, wide, by the way? <laughs> but they'll go wide, wide against South Africa, trying to move these guys like it's a bit and that away from the point of contact mm. where they can't use their physicality. So it'll be interesting, but a lot will come into uh, to the coach's ticket and they think, of how do we need to play this to win? How do we play the conditions? How do we play their selection? They will come into in play later in the week. But at this stage, they'll be just concentrating mm. on what they do well. And the rest is out of their control in some regards. Yeah. If How I do you see it playing out, Sonny? Oh, if I was <laughs> South Africa, you'd want to uh, just minimise any momentum gain for yeah. Marty, um, you know, break down stuff around Sam Kane. Because yeah. your game managers, nine and ten, you need them to be hissing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with you. Defence will be key. Oh, Defence yeah. Defence will be key. South yeah. Africa are the most aggressive frontline defenders in the game. We know that. It's just w yeah. whether, again, they'll be instructed by Felix Jones and, and these other players, look, cut down the likes of space for Moanga and that. If we're in his face, then he can't play ball. If we're in Will Jordan's face, he can't play ball. Consequently, New Zealand will be saying, if we can get outside mm -hmm. their forward pack, Moanga can make a break like scored the try first phase of, of, of Ireland, then that's what they'll look to do. Will the set piece, will South Africa's set piece be key to this performance again for them will yeah. they they won't move away from what they've no, been doing because they'll look back and say yeah. when was the last time we played New Zealand they won't look back to Eden Park where they got run off the feet New Zealand will look back to that and say that's the way to beat South Africa and conversely South Africa will say the way to beat New Zealand is how we did at Twickenham yeah. where we run 35 points at them by not giving them any ball New Zealand couldn't get out of their 22 they were stuck in their 22 then they coughed up of course the yellow card or red card was Scotty Barrett or something then they were down to 14 men. There was no way they were coming back. Yeah. But that's the way the South Africa would look at it. It'd be interesting to see how their selection goes in their type five. I don't know that 
he might make a couple of changes there to refresh him. I don't know that uh, Vermillion or something might they might go with Jasper Visa or something. I, you know, even Smith Quagga Smith, who's mm. been fantastic yeah. replacing. Do they but try they to quicken the, the game up? They do. And whether uh, White Lock will start as well yeah, in the second or fourth place. No, I think it'll be comes Brody on and, at the end. And, 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 and Barrett. Um, and both teams are so comfortable without possession as well. Yeah, defence is a weapon for yeah. both of them, but I think more for South Africa. I um, who would you have on the wing, by the way, Talia or uh, Fanuku? Um, I would have are oh, both outstanding, but I, I would mm. have Talia. Yeah, I would actually have Talia because of the elusiveness you'd need against the uh, Springboks. Man, he's so elusive. Both, so all of them are. We elusive, saw what he did against France. Yeah. Uh, First half, second half, consistencies yeah. from Auckland Blues right up until now. Every single game. Like he beats mm. players every single game. That might also be dictated. Selection might be dictated by the weather because they might look at going with a kind of a, 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 a bigger guy, Fanuku's six three. Mm. You know, in the air against South Africa, they might. You know, it doesn't worry me who plays. Mm -hmm. They're both good players. Yeah. They both bring different things. But it's just interesting to know whether they're going to tinker with selection a bit. Or not? It'll be interesting. I love that both teams mm. are experienced at World Cup finals because be cracking game. Oh my gosh! But the that's, way that, that they will be there, they, aren't you? They, they've been there before, yeah. and the last four tournaments have featured one of these yeah. teams. Yes. And I don't know, I know. Does the no northern southern hemisphere chat come into it again? But they know what it takes to win these well, knockouts. Look at the games. history between yeah. the two, probably the greatest rugby nations on the planet come head-to-head -head for the first time in a World Cup final since what? 1995. Yeah. 95. It's going to be clash of the juggernauts. Mm -hmm. and people are saying, oh, well, you know, th there's not so much interest after Ireland went out, after France went out. But man, disagree. there's a lot of interest in this game. Yeah. It wouldn't have been the same interest. New Zealand would have been cheering for an England win because I think they would have thought, okay, well, it's England. Mm, and yeah. then would have celebrated that game and said, look, it's great. We've overachieved. We've made the final. Yeah. That would have been right like for the Like 2019. Pick New now New Zealand go back in the show and like, oh, my God, it's the box again. Again. And it's yeah. going to be Muhammad Ali versus <laughs> Fraser. It's going to be Foreman versus Oh, it's going to be a cracker. Yeah. Who would be crown champion, Sonny? Oh, the team who will execute Evergreens on entry get points, whether it's a three or seven, mm. five, um, quickest Breakdown mm. on attack, the slowest breakdown on defence. Um, penalty count. The mm. team that keeps the lowest penalty count and keeps five, 15 players on the field. Um, and then, so I've got Ruck Speed, KPIs. Yeah, whoever scores the most tries, maybe. So who would that be? I'm going for, <laughs> I'm actually going for, and look, I've mentioned to you, I absolutely adore, absolutely adore mm. South Africa. The Brian Habanas who got into the game because of that oh, Mandela weekend. <laughs> Um, but I'm uh, yeah, going for, uh, yeah, my friend Joe's team and going yeah. for the All Blacks. Yeah. Friend. I, I love you I always Africa. thought I always thought that if New Zealand could get to a final, mm -hmm. and that was that was if they could get, I didn't think realistically, scouts on and all that, I don't know whether <laughs> scouts on it, I didn't think they'd get over that Irish match. Yeah. But since that time, I've seen a, a, a really 360 change in the way New Zealand are playing. They've got the momentum, they've got the confidence, they're, they're physically uh, less tired. They've got some players back who hadn't had a, a lot of game time, Lomax, yeah. De Groot, these guys come back into the fray, Geordie Barrett. You know, so they're fresh, they're ready to go. Ardy will have a, 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 a draw full of receipts. So <laughs> I just think that the South Africans are coming in a bit underdone, uh, not physically, well, a little bit physically, they've said some tough matches. So I'm, 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 I'm going with New Zealand, hand the heart. I just think they have a bit too much gas out wide. I think the biggest receipt is the uh, 95 World Cup. Yeah, that's the biggest receipt of all. And that also, and also the Twickenham. I think the Twickenham yeah. was a real yeah, kick up the raw. rear. Mm -hmm. That was raw. That was raw for for most New Zealand because that took away all the momentum going into the World Cup. If you go back to the, when they beat Eden Park, in, in, the way they dismantled South Africa in that first 40 minutes. I thought, wow, New Zealand are going to win the World Cup. That completely changed in that one game of Twicken. I said, now, yeah. no, they're not going to win the World yeah. Cup. They're going to be lucky to get out of into the semi-finals. That changed again when they beat Ireland uh, because, you know, that whole mentality changed. But they do have the momentum. They do have the fresher legs. They've got 
you know, some game breakers, as do South Africa, if they can just play it the, the right way for New Zealand, yeah. I don't think they'll be wanting the rain. I think the rain probably suits South Africa's, even though they didn't make a good job of it last week yeah. in England. But I think the slower the game gets, mm. the more it'll suit. More so, so the spring but box. Come on, at uh, this time, I, I, I don't have to have loyalty. <laughs> I just have to say, come on, New Zealand. Uh, you know, I wasn't singing that, you know, when I was at the Irish matches. I did, like, I did support Ireland because I thought they deserves it now. Okay, New Zealand against any other team. <laughs> well, we're expecting an epic battle. That's all we have time for on today's show. My thanks to Brent <laughs> and to Sene. Until next week, from all of us here on House of Rugby, with thanks to Heineken, Slonga Fold. Sports Joe presents House of Rugby, together with Heineken. Get the facts, be drink aware, visit drinkaware.ie.